Okay, today we're going to make a brush out of an image, and specifically we're going to make a brush out of an image of grass. So I've found an image of grass on the internet, and I've gone ahead and opened it up into Photoshop. Now, once you have this image, you need to do a couple of things. We need to um, duplicate this layer, but we need to do that with isolating out the background, so taking that background out. Um, now, depending on the image that you have, there might be different ways to select the background or select the grass itself um, that would work better. Sometimes the quick selection tool here is the best because then you can kind of click through similar areas and fill that up. Um, I'm actually going to be using the magic wand tool. When you use the magic wand tool, you can select all areas that are the same color and because our background is so uniform here if I just click once in that background you can notice that I've selected all of these different parts now you can change your tolerance if you're starting to see that it's selecting too much of your grass but overall I'm pretty happy with this so now that I have this selected I can do a couple things I can either delete this background or I can duplicate this layer with um, just the grass but to do that I'm going to need to select the grass and not the background. So all I have to do in order to do that is right click or control click and then select inverse. So now I have this grass selected and then I'll duplicate this layer with just the grass selected. So I'll hit command J and now if I turn this background layer visibility off you can see that I have this nice grass layer with no background and it looks really good. Now I could turn this into a brush, but the problem at this point is that I have these really sharp edges. So if I started overlapping this, it wouldn't really look seamless and natural. So I need to make another selection and I can just use my regular lasso tool for this. When I select my lasso tool, one thing that I want to do is set my feather up here in my options menu to, you know, it might be 20 pixels for you. For me, I'm going to do about 30 pixels. And I'll show you how we can check and see how that looks. So if you select it and you see that it's too feathered or not feathered enough, um, you can go back and change that. So here I have it set to 30 pixels. I'm going to draw my selection. Actually, let me try that again. Draw my selection here along what I want to be my brush. And at this point, it just looks like a solid selection if you look at those edges of uh, my marching ants. But if I hit Q, you can see a preview of that feathered selection. So you can see the red is what's not selected, and then anything that is not red is what is selected. And you can see there's a gradual transition of that red to the plane here. So, um, so I'm pretty happy with that. If you don't like that, you can hit Q again, hit Command D to deselect, then go back and change your feathering and select it again. Okay. You could also go into Select and Mask, and when you do that, you're going to have ex um, extra feathering options in here, so you could feather that selection even more if you wanted to, and that would be a way that you could add feathering, um, but you can't take the feathering away. So, um, so yeah. Once you have that, we're going to go ahead and click our little mask icon, and then we have this uh, image of grass. And uh, the last thing that we are going to do before we uh, actually save this as a brush is we're going to select the grass image and go to Image Adjustments and Desaturate. There we go. Now we can turn this into a brush. So I can go to Edit define brush preset and then save this as the brush. I'm going to hit cancel because I have already saved a brush. So now if I go into a new document here, I've created a new document, I've added a green background and then I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to go into my brush window which is over here. If you don't see that you can go to window and brushes and you should be able to see that. Um, and then you can choose your grass brush. Now what you want to do is space this out a little bit and then we're going to go into shape dynamics. We do not want to change the angle that much, maybe a little bit. Um, if we flip X jitter then that will change the direction of those, uh, those uh, edges of the um, 
of the graph. So we may want to flip X jitter on this. Um, and I'm going to take this down a little bit because I don't want to change that that much. We do want to possibly uh, have a slight size jitter, but not a ton. So there we go. So you can play around with this if you, if you want. Now one other thing that we can do is if we click on color dynamics, um, we can do a foreground background jitter. So if we kind of take that up um, and do a slight hue jitter, then what we will see when we click this is a range of hues between our foreground and our background. So currently our, my foreground color is blue and my background color is orange. So I want to change that to kind of a green. So I'm going to kind of do this yellowy green for the foreground and for the background I'll do kind of a darker green and hit OK. So now again I'm going to go back into my brush and here I can kind of see a preview of that. You could change your opacity if you want, or you could just kind of keep it at this. Enlarge or decrease the size of your brush with your bracket keys, which are, um, you know, your open or closed brackets. And I'm going to start in the background, and I'm going to just start clicking once through here. Notice that the color, you know, slightly changes. So I'm starting in the background because I want to then come forward. Now if you have too much of a difference between your two colors of green, you might find that you need to get those a little bit more similar. So that's something that you can do as you're going along. As I'm getting a little bit closer to the foreground, I'm going to start changing that size. just using those bracket keys. Now something that you may not know about um, showing depth in a work of art is that usually things in the foreground are darker and things in the background are lighter. So if you wanted to at this point, you could kind of go in and change this to be a little bit darker so that you just have some darker um, pieces of grass here in the foreground. And you can make some really big ones here. If um, one thing that I kind of do is if I notice that the brush isn't how I like it, I just go ahead and click off to the side until it gets back to where I want it. There's not too bad. So I don't I'll go ahead and click. And then I might even want to go down and make this even darker. I'll do a couple down here. So there you can see we have a grassy kind of area with a brush that we created from an actual image of grass. So go ahead and practice with this. If you want to, you could put some little creatures in this grass. You could play around with some different um, you know, ways of creating maybe hills. Maybe we're on a hill here and we're looking out onto a vista of smaller, you know, areas of grass. So um, experiment, have some fun with it, and good luck.